Administrative coaching. The coaching profession has more than just coaching duties during practices and games. Team management functions are part of the job. The more efficiently you manage your team, the more time you will have to actually coach your athletes. Throughout this lecture, we will look into the seven managers a coach must be in the preseason, during the season, and postseason. These seven duties include being a policy manager, information manager, personnel manager, instructional manager, event and contest manager, logistics manager, and financial manager. Most teams, especially in the competitive school divisions, have team policies that address a variety of topics such as class attendance and grades, missing practices, dress codes, team behavior, and cost to play. In the preseason, as the policy manager, it is up to you to develop and update all team policies. You will also need to review your governing organization's policies, for example, the NCAA or NAIA. Lastly, you will need to determine how you will distribute your policies. In season, you will need to present those policies to your team. One way is to prepare a team handbook and to provide your athletes with essential information in written form that they can use as a reference if need be. During your first team meeting, you can review the contents of the handbook. This will ensure that all members of the team know what is expected of them. As the manager, it is up to you to apply these policies throughout the season. In the postseason, while the season is still fresh in your mind, write down any critical incidents that occurred that tested your current team policies. Make notes about adding or modifying a current policy. Information Manager. During the preseason is the time to create or improve your informational systems. You will need to develop a plan for collecting, assessing, disseminating, and archiving information. Some of the typical information coaches need to collect and manage include athlete information. This may include, but not limited to, contact and emergency contact information, medical history, uh, pre-participation examinations, proof of eligibility, signed waivers and release forms, and skill evaluations. The next topic, support personnel information. This may include, but not limited to, contact and emergency contact information, job descriptions, resume, and performance evaluations. The next, practice and training plans. These may include practice plans and workout sessions for the preseason. Event plans. May be team meeting agendas, support staff meeting agendas, and plans for special events. Reference library. May contain rule books, technical and tactical skill ideas, physical conditioning, and nutrition articles. Recognition and awards might include press releases and records of athletes' awards. Personal, this is for the coach. It may include personal resume, win-loss records, recognitions and awards, and job contacts. Logistics records may involve equipment records, supply records, and transportation records. Financial records, should include income sources, expense sources, receipts, and forms for purchasing or reimbursement. Governance and policies may include policies from national, local governing bodies, team policies, risk management plans, and insurance records. And finally, contest records may include contest schedules, scouting reports, and team win-loss records. Informational manager during the season. Your role as an information manager changes. You should shift your attention to gathering information about your opponents through scouting. Another in-season role is managing your team's publicity. Sports information directors coordinate publicity at the collegiate and professional levels, but many teams' publicity is the coach's responsibility. You can do this by reaching out to your local media, by developing a team website, or a social media page. During the postseason, make sure that all your records are completed and submitted to the correct people and filed safely. Some records may include eligibility records, equipment inventory, 
or request for maintenance for your facility. Personnel Manager. This area of management is vital to the success of your team. In the preseason, you have many personnel managerial duties. They include making decisions on what support staff you need and want. Recruit and select your athletes. Develop the tools you will use to evaluate your athletes. Develop a system for communicating with your athletes. Remind is a very popular program used to remind people of important dates and times of contests and meetings. Next, determine the eligibility of your athletes. Appoint captains. These people should act as a liaison between the coach and the team and should also serve as role models for your program. Finally, make the decision on how your athletes will be awarded. Will you have a reward system at all? If so, what things will athletes be awarded for? During the season, you must ensure that you have effective communication with your entire team. This includes your athletes, your assistant coaches, the managers, and also the team trainer. Monitor your staff's work, recognize good work and praise them, and help them when they need it. Revisit your legal duties if needed. Maintain your organization. Don't let your paperwork pile up. Motivate your team. This is especially important when your season is not going as planned. In the postseason, have a team meeting to review the season. Allow your athletes to evaluate the program in order to grow and improve the program. Determine when and how athletes will return equipment and uniforms. Plan your awards, dinner, or banquet. Finally, help graduating seniors advance, either through obtaining scholarships for college, possibly talking to agents, or helping them seek employment. Instructional Manager during the preseason, the instructional manager should develop a solid instructional plan that includes setting goals for the season, determining how you will organize the material for instructions. How will you build on the fundamentals or what will you teach to reach these goals? During the season, you will need to develop or modify your, pra your practice plans based on the progress of your athletes and also the input from your coaching staff. Following the season, as the instructional manager, you should review your instructional plan and evaluate the effectiveness of the plan. You should also evaluate your staff and yourself on how well you executed the plan. Therefore, you can make changes for the next season. As the event and contest manager, prior to the season, you need to set your schedule. Determine the contest or events you want to host and attend. Schedule these events or get in touch with the personnel that handles the responsibility. For example, at a small high school, you may have to go through the athletic director to host an event so there is not a scheduling conflict. During the season, your responsibilities consist of managing your contest on your schedule. You must be prepared, however, for special circumstances that might disrupt your plans, like inclement weather. At the closure of the season, you should reflect and evaluate the season's activities. Take into consideration your practice schedule. Did you practice too long or too short? Did you spend enough time on drills to prepare your team? Was the scheduled opponents appropriate for your team? Now I understand in some conferences you have to play certain teams, but others you get to select. Lastly, look at how well you were able to manage your team during the contest. Did you call the right plays? or make use of your timeouts appropriately. Logistics is defined as the detailed coordination of a complex operation involving many people, facilities, or supplies. As a preseason logistics manager, facilities is one thing you will need. You need a facility for practices and contents. Equipment and supplies is another area you will need to manage. As far as equipment is concerned, do you need new pieces of equipment? What is the current inventory of your equipment? What other supplies do you need throughout the season? And how do you make these purchases? Transportation is also something you need to manage and figure out in the preseason. You need to determine your transportation needs for the season 
and then schedule the buses or vans that will get you to and from the contest. The logistics you need to be concerned about during this season include inspecting and maintaining equipment. If there is anything broken, it needs to be fixed, and you should know the proper procedure in order for that to happen. You will also need to monitor the use and need for supplies in order to ensure that you do not run out of vital supplies. Following the end of the season, you will need to take care of your facility responsibilities. They may include cleaning the floors or locker rooms. You will need to ensure that all equipment is returned and make notes of any damage. Once all equipment is returned, it is very important to do a final inventory to make sure that you have the equipment you need for the next season. The last managerial role you will need to play is the financial manager. Prior to the start of the season, you will need to secure funding for the team, if not already in place. Depending on the level you are coaching, you may have to hold fundraisers to get the money you need for your program. After you secure funding, you will need to set a budget for the season. If you need to make purchases at any time throughout the season, it is best to learn the process before the season begins. Also, as the financial manager, you need to know who is responsible for holding the money and who on your staff can spend it. During this season, you must watch and stay within the budget you set within the preseason. Be sure to keep all records of purchases to justify where the funds went and be reimbursed if necessary. In the postseason, you will need to collect all outstanding funds. Be sure to update all financial records and receipts. Make sure you submit the necessary paperwork to the proper administrators to ensure that proper procedure is followed. Also, following the season is a good time to start thinking about, about um, what you may need for the next season and how much money you will need in order to make those purchases. Coaching is a profession where you must do more than just teach the X's and O's. There are duties that need to be taken care of throughout the entire year. Like I said earlier, the more efficiently you manage your team in these seven duties, the more time you will have to actually coach your team. Now, to make sure that members of this class are actually watching these lectures that I spend time on, you have a chance to earn some extra credit. Email me your favorite color and I will give you up to a half a point back on your lowest forum grade. My email address is krm at reinhardt.edu.